and you were, I mean, on the show. And, I mean, I have to say, you can survive. <laughs> you, you handled a lot of those different, um, those different activities well. And, and you, to be honest... Well, I won immunity. I'm the only person in the history of Survivor to win immunity and be voted off anyway. So, so go figure. But, yeah, I won four United States championships in the heptathlon. And I uh, was an All-American in basketball and track. And, I mean, I'm pretty athletic, although I'm substantially older than I was when I was winning national championships. But I'm, I'm pretty fit. I, I didn't hear you. It does I ride matter. bikes everywhere. I mean, I'm, I'm most, I'm 42. Most people think I'm in my 20s, so I'm, yeah, I'm pretty true. fit. That's but true. you do not have to be that fit to be. I mean, I have friends on, on Survivor who are like glamour girl beauty queens who always do their nails. In fact, when we first got to the island and we had to swim from a boat, uh, we had to swim about a half a mile to an island and run up and get uh, the immunity necklace, and I won. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I actually thought I was going to break the stereotype that blacks couldn't swim, uh, <laughs> but they didn't show me swimming. If I had to swim a half a mile, they showed me running up the beach to get, it. you know, after, after we swam in from the ocean and got to the beach, we had to run up the beach to get the immunity idol. Mm -hmm. They showed me running. So everyone said, oh, we knew she was going to win. And I was like, but I had to swim, you know, a half a mile before that. But, but when you, I mean, when you look at the show itself, you always see that there's a lot of water activities. So definitely, I mean, just to survive, I mean, I don't know if you had to, like when I was looking at one show, uh, the person had to actually get on uh, one of the logs and stay there, like very still uh, in the middle of the water. Did you have to do Yeah, that? we have to do stuff like that. I actually had to go through this muddy, it was just like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It was nasty. It was... I don't want to say a creek because we were in a jungle, but I guess it was a jungle creek and it was muddy and it was like quicksand and you had to hold on to this rope and go through it. It's It was nasty, so you can't, I mean, you got, you can't be afraid to be dirty and stinky because they don't give us soap or water or anything like that. I so. mean, well, what did you guys, like, eat? I mean, did you have to actually uh, go and survive and get your own food? Yes, ma'am. It, it's really interesting because when we... Land Well, we didn't land on the island. They told us we had to get to this island you know, after the boat stopped, and so we had to swim in. But when we got there, there were a number of people on the show who, I mean, I don't know what they thought. They couldn't have possibly read the application because they thought they were going to feed us. It's like crickets, um, which they aired on the show because they edit a lot. It's like crickets. When you're hungry, you know, you'll... <laughs> and did you see any of those, uh, those big, uh, nasty snakes and... Like yeah, I that. saw snakes and and bugs and yeah, we. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm from a ghetto in Houston. I mean, I've seen rats and stuff, so <laughs> well, <laughs> it's no different. I, I mean, I, you know, when I decided to be on Survivor, I said, "Well, I know I've survived house burning down because we didn't have electricity and we were we were using uh, candles. I've been without food before. We've been without a home before." I've slept on floors before. Being on Survivor isn't going to be hard. I mean, right. I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm probably better prepared to be on this show than anybody because I'm used to not having. And okay. that was one of the reasons I got voted off because I didn't think it was a big deal. We had coconuts, and I don't like coconuts, but right. coconuts are enough to sustain you. And if you grow up like I grew up, you eat what you don't like. It's going to feed you, so it's either eat what you don't like or starve. I mean... In fact, that's really not a choice. So, to the audience, you are like um, you're an inspiration to a, a number of of people that that may have came up in a ghetto or or ghetto, but you you have survived just like just like the name, the Houston Survivor Challenge. I mean, you survived that challenge. You you were, I mean, what is it, magnum cum laude in, in college? You were voted. I mean, you're recognized as uh, by the congressional representatives and uh, the government position here in Houston as the you know the city council member at large position five you've done some amazing things and one thing that I can say about you no matter what you are proud to be who you are and that is a well, big deal well thank you I can say this that 
You know, when you grow up and your dad kills himself or you're with him when he kills himself, that really affects you. Kids are cruel. They call you crazy. They say you're going to kill yourself like your daddy. They make fun of you and say, ah, as long as daddy's head is under the bed. And, I mean, you either develop toughness or you perish. So, um, you know, I was infested by an uncle. I was raped in college. Just a bunch of really bad stuff happened to me. My brother was murdered. He was shot five times, twice in the head when he was 19. You know, no you, we all have challenges, and so I was just sort of driven. I, I did not want to be evicted like I, as an adult like I was as a, as a child. My mom didn't own a house. We were, uh, a par I'm an apartment kid or a rent house kid, and so we were constantly being evicted because my mom, who's had five kids, I'm the oldest of five kids in a single-parent household, although I will say that when my dad killed himself, it changed our family because my mom was married to my dad, and Obviously, I was your child, and then all of a sudden, my dad killed himself, and we're a single-parent family, and my mother's traumatized because her husband killed himself. And so we had all these issues that were associated with suicide and single-parent families and being black and, and and mental illness and just all kinds of stuff. So but, but you can either sit around and say, uh, I'm going to be like, uh-huh. How, how have you been, I mean, how did you do it? How did you overcome all of these obstacles. How? Because you uh, have really, really come a long way. In fact, one black man is in, uh, Scotty is in the chat room right now, and he's so impressed. I mean, oh, wow, he's thanks. really, really impressed right now. So is uh, Down South, Down South girl, Georgia girl. I mean, what do you, I mean, you know, the choice is, and I have had this discussion with a lot of people in my family, some of my cousins my age are locked up. And um, I have my aunt was murdered, and I have a cousin in prison for murder. And you just sort of wonder how I turned out like I did, and they didn't. But the truth is, when I was growing up and not having air condition or being evicted and just being ashamed of, you know, stuff, all I knew when I was a child was when I grew up, I don't want to live like I live now. And even though I didn't see home ownership and being a lawyer and stuff, I, I, I didn't see it in my life. I saw it on TV, and I just said, when I grew up, I was going to be either a doctor or a lawyer because on TV, the doctors and lawyers were rich, and I wanted to be rich. And so I just started asking. My mom was very instrumental. My mom said, I can't pay for you to go to college, but your brain can, and you and need to go to college you, if you want your you life to be better. I'm I didn't sorry, hear you. How are you able to even, like, you were magnum cum laude in college. How were you able to focus school. on your academics? <laughs> oh, well, I sort of got punished for I didn't sort of. My mom was very, my mom expected me to make straight A's. I, I got punished for B's. I got punished for the summer for B's, and I caught whoopings if I got anything less than 100 A. In fact, so I had room, some motivation. <laughs> on the chat room, Black React Radio just said, that you are the real people in this world. You are the real people in this world. Wow, thanks. I appreciate because that. We have people uh, tuned in around the world right now. And they are, I don't know if you see it or you, uh, or you logged on a computer, but they're chatting away and they're stating some really, really good things about you. I mean, um, one, like one black man has a question. He, uh, Scotty, he says, uh, did did you go on a scholarship to college, or you know how? Would I you did. I, I well, I was um, I was actually voted the scholar athlete of Houston. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I've been a straight A student my whole life. I tend to be super competitive. I don't like to lose. So I don't know that I'm always talented than other people, but I'm certainly willing to outwork everybody. So um, I just I mean, I noticed in kindergarten that the person who got the highest grade in class got a smiley face stamped on their paper. So it was my goal to have all the smiley faces, and I got them. So <laughs> I'm just, I, you, you got a certificate at the end of the year if you got perfect attendance, and you got a trip to Astro World, which my mother couldn't afford. So I had perfect attendance every year for the express purpose of getting to go to Astro World at the end of every year. So yeah, I just, I figured out other ways to get stuff paid for that I needed paid for. 